Many good ideas originate beneath trees. Sir Isaac Newton discovered gravity beneath a tree. Luberdeck adjustable awnings started beneath this tree in Montana, Pretoria. Since then, Luberdeck has developed into the leading patio cover manufacturer in South Africa. Luverdeck is able to design, develop, manufacture, assemble and install customized awnings anywhere in South Africa. To date, more than 20 roofs have also been installed in California and that number is set to increase significantly. At the heart of the Luverdeck system lies the Luver slat and patented Luver carrier. These slats are manufactured from chromatic steel which is rolled into the unique Luverdeck profile, which gives it the rigidity needed to span more than 8 meters. The slats clip onto the carriers, obviating the need for special fasteners. The pivot point on the carrier is set towards the rear, which causes the larger front surface to lift during wind speeds in excess of 140 km per hour. That complies with stringent US safety standards. The carriers are attached to risers, which are either welded onto a beam, as in the steel version, or clipped onto a special extrusion, as in the aluminium version. The carriers operate in unison thanks to a connecting bar and axle mechanism. The steel version is known as the Luverdeck Standard and the aluminium as the Luverdeck Supreme. These adjustable awnings enhance the living standards of thousands of South Africans. The roofs are infinitely adjustable should one desire more light or heat. Luverdeck awnings are aesthetically pleasing and allow different types of fascias to be fitted to suit each individual home. They also carry extensive guarantees and require virtually no maintenance. <laughs> Many architects and developers have chosen to incorporate Luverdeck products in their designs, while others have proscribed them to their tenants. Constant R&D is maintained to develop more user-friendly products and features. Uh, in the olden days we've used a single drill bit drill press uh, because we need a lot of uh, drilling uh, in our operation. Uh, it took us one and a half minutes per hole and now we've made a machine that does nine holes at a time and it only takes us about 55 seconds for the nine holes. The quest for a modularized roof, which will still allow customization to client needs, was initiated during the Luverdeck participation in the 1995 International Hardware Exhibition in Chicago.
South African Forces Institute has a proud record of service to the military. This record, spanning over a period of 80 years, includes serving South African troops with distinction during the German Southwest Africa campaign, both world wars, and more recently, the war in. He performs several functions. Its primary function is to provide shopping services to our troops in the field. In fact, the field service provides SAFI its right to exist. Three secondary but vital functions provide SAFI with the necessary infrastructure and expertise required to perform its primary functions. Firstly, the wholesale function, supplying a large variety of merchandise to funds and institutions. Secondly, an extension of the wholesale service is the canteen management service, providing canteen accounting and management services to units on a profit-sharing basis. Thirdly, and of vital importance, is the retail shopping service, providing goods and service to members and their families on military bases. All Some fresh meats. Your friendly Safi butcher provides these and more. Get a car, get a bike, get a trailer, get a caravan, get some fuel, get going to the Safi garage, and get going. And I enjoy the service that I get you. They don't do anything big on your car unless they ask you first. Quality and variety are the watchwords of the Safi dairy. The freshest milk, yogurt and lots of ice cream is produced on the premises using freshest farm ingredients. The garden shop has everything to beautify the home and garden. The florist is at hand. One. Richard entered it. Quiet, 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 quiet. Looked about for lunch to see if he was alone. Certainly is. Close his door. Pauses. Inhales. Turns and leans his back against door. Exhales. Stops once. He wipes his eyes on cuffs. Notices the black armband, which he removes and into which he blows his nose. He then stuffs the armband in the pocket of his own coat, which he then removes and folds somewhat fastidiously over the lack of sofa. He pauses, looking about the room, taking a private moment. Possibly adjusting his underwear and mirrors covering his shoes and tail, instinct lighting right behind his knee. He then stuffs arms down in that pocket of his own coat, which he then removes and folds somewhat fastidiously over the lack of sofa. He pauses, looking about Ruan, taking a private moment, possibly adjusting his underwear and mirrors covering his shoes and tail, instinct lighting right behind his knee. A fly buzzes past his nose, breaking into his thoughts. He swats it quite carelessly, puts some arms into that captain's famous hand, which he brings down and up close to his eye. He opens hand ever so slightly, watching fly a while. Although it appears certain that he will open hand, allowing fly her freedom, he suddenly smashes hands together. Finishing fly and causing crack to sound in room. He walks to desk and using a slip of memo paper from pad, he scrapes fly from palm and into wastebasket at foot of desk. He inspects stain on palm, lowers hand to side, pauses, returns to chair, sobs once, sits, bows head, notices shoe, removes same, places a single shoe in his lap, sobs again. Thumbs up, Steve. Here, yeah, Steve, break a leg. Good luck, Steve. Steve. Break a leg and an arm. arm. Hope to see you next year. Finds lacks and paid a handkerchief into which he blows nose enthusiastically, unclogging the stain and producing substantial honking sound in the room. He settles back in the chair, stares vacantly up at the seat.
four, three, three, two. Something fastidious here at the back of the cell. He pauses, taking a pile of garbage and he the room. Possibly adjusting his underwear. And discovering the deal the nail gets a bite of the behind his knee. A fly buzz is passing to know he's breaking into his thoughts. He swats at fly carelessly, but Someone managed to capture second hand. Which he was down. And then close to his eye. He opened his hand ever so slightly. Which he found out why. Although it appears certain he will open his hand about a fly through. So he smashed his hands together. Finishing the fly and causing sudden clap to sound in the room. She looks about him cautiously to see if she's alone. Sees Richard sitting in a chair. Richard quickly bows his head and sees the somewhat grey look in his face. Rather a stand back and stare at his black stocking foot. <laughs> Ruth smiles as though she's been acknowledged. Richard flashes a quick look in her direction to the servant as she is entered. Ruth catches Richard's glance and smiles again. Richard's 
falls to return the slide does. He then returns to the former position and chair head bowed, eyes back and stepping down toward Blackstock in foot. Ruth leads her back again to the audience girls. The chief adjusts at the very discreet. Ruth sighs. Richard wipes the palm of his hand behind the knee of his trouser leg, comforting both the wife and the rub of the day of his head bite. Ruth touches a black armband. To be certain it has not been lost. Slides again. Richard inspects his palm to be certain now the fly stain has been completely removed. Satisfied none of this. Wrap his hand in his trouser leg again. Ruth pretends to be removing her overcoat, while never venturing a step on the back of Richard's head. She slips her hand inside her coat and discreetly adjusts her belt again. Just as Richard turns to her. Ruth recalls, putting hand from coat. Seeing her startled hair, returns to form position in chair, Beckett is staring down into a black stocking foot. Ruth then moves to the bar and the supplies, so they the top saying. Richard senses her presence at the bar and turns to look disapprovingly at her. Ruth, sensing his disapproval, quickly pours an inch of bourbon, which she dials. One gulp. Richard continues his disapproving stare while unconsciously touching his nose. Ruth raises a glass towards Richard, smiles. Blatantly on staff, unconsciously touching her nose. She smiled, deliberately on her nose. He turns away pompously. <coughs> she clears her throat in an attempt to regain his attention, but she remains unmoved, disapproving. She pulls open a curtain and adjusts her belt ear. Raising the hip and thigh slightly and quickly, adjusts his briefs, scratches his tail, insect bites, spits into his fly stain and palm. She then rubs into his knee. He turns now and faces her directly, but she's pretending not to notice, not to be paying attention to him. She searches for and finds a rather gaudy orange knob and handkerchief, into which she indolently honks her open nose. He pulls off his socks, pulls her toes, playing at same. She flings her clothes sloppy over the back of so. Ruth removes the gloves and hat, placing them precisely beside his first shoe. Tossing them in a heap on the sofa. And then peels off his other sock. She then hoists up the skirts and unhitches the stocking top from the front of that goddess of the god's house. Richard averts his eyes. Ruth stares the back of Richard's head. The effect should be one of deep hostility. But she is highly surprised to find that she is weaker. Yes, Richard. There is a moment of silence. Stop tension first. Richard will pound the arm of his chair three times. He stays straight ahead. Eyes unblinking. Three dull thuds. Ruth moves to move his chair. Stands behind it a moment. Pauses. Richard turns to him, eyes quite clear. Ruth is first to look away. Ruth moves to buy the good supply. Pours two inches of burden this time. Returns to Ruby's chain. Ruth does not look up. He picks up his trouser thread from his knee. Ruth sits, crosses legs, removes shoes, floors them. Now she's wearing one stocking full taut, the other day in the her knee. She removes her stocking and allows it to lay at the floor near her foot. Richard glances at it, discreetly touching his nose. She then reaches up under her skirt and unhitches other stocking top from her garter belt. Richard stares at her disapproval. Ruth senses Richard's disapproval, but neither looks up nor acknowledges saying. She instead removes the other stocking from her from foot, which he crunches and holds the same hand as Glossy Burger. Which he glances again at her. Ruth is weak then. This is Ruth moves to Guadalupe, 
Jesus would live in this time. Tells us what's going to happen with Paul. He turns to Ruby's chair. Richard does not look up. He picks a loose trouser thread on his knee. Ruth sits. Floor shoes. Across his legs. She turns away. Ruth notices now she is wearing one stocking full towards the other day and use it in her She removes her stocking and allows it to rain at the floor near her foot. She then reaches up under her skirt and heads to the other side from the glass of glass. Richard glances at her, squeaking through his nose. Ruth senses his glance, but neither looks up nor mother to say. She instead removes other stocking from her, from her leg, but she crunches and holds in the same hand as glass of bourbon. Richard suddenly stands, <coughs> shoes, crosses over the bar. Ruth watches him, unconsciously touching her nose. Richard searches for and finds a small clear bottle of club soda which he neatly uncaps. He pours into a small clear glass. He recaps the bottle, placing precisely where it's flung. Notices his stocking crunched up in hand. She reaches down and finds the other stocking, turning back and loose nut, which is placed on top of the seat. Ruth remembers all men were cut. Stands, goes to it. Ruth begins to remove all men. Stops, thinks better of it. Returns to Jane. Begins to sit, stops, thinks that of it. Drains a glass of its remaining burden. She returns to the bar and gets a fly, but she pours three in the burden this time. Ruth tosses bottle. Now I empty into wastebasket. Someone startles when she returns her. Something new. Who recoils, spinning her drink on the rug. Which she stares at stain on the rug. Ruth rubs stain with her toe. Ruth turns cupping forehead into palm of right hand. She then moves the hand over her nose and mouth and thumb. First, by dropping his glass into the floor. Sir, Ruth looks in the direction of sound. I have to come. There's no way. <gasps> and, uh, you ready? There was a moment of silence. Which Richard breaks first by dropping his glass into the floor. Ruth turns the direction of sound. She was amazed. He grabs his nose. Ruth smiles. Richard leans forward and picks up glass. Ruth strains glass at her remaining burger. One bomb. She places glass top counter, searches for and finds a dish top, which she aims and pinches at the floor near Richard's foot. Richard looks first at the dish top, and he breathes for security in here. He then picks up the dish top and kind of stay in the same. Rose moves to Ruby's chair. Sits. She's weeping. Ruth looks away. 
Look at this dark room until your eyes meet pictures. His expression is cold. The muscles on his face taught his mouth benevolent, angry. We do not teach you. I should turn this away. Because the tension of the knees. Will you close this door? She has met its enormous television nerves. Bruce Hawk like eyes and hopelessly flat chest. Richard's steady pomposity, his gravity. Bruce's unfathomable lack of courage. Richard's incomprehensible lack of feeling. Bruce's subconsciously correct posture. Rich girl's shoulders. Would you like it? And does he? And it now is fair. As a new sudden snap of more to disapproval, from passion. Mother's call put through by Betsy. Richard's phone call, agent study stoppers, University of Vermont's Tyler of Manchester. Employers, nobody, researching, nothing, touching, no one. Interrupting bus concerto, D minor, three harpsichords, orchestra, Alassis Yonala. Father's body must be gotten. Died in hospital's office. Bruce had just known her father had died. Flew from Ohio International to Logan International, United Airlines 707. Arranged mother to fly to Hot Springs Arkansas to collect the father's body. Flight home. Bruce had not even known her father had been dead. Her first flight three years prior. Had arranged and paid for American Airlines first class ticket. Had ticket had and delivered to mother two days prior. Had years ago conquered fear of their travel. Had flown to and from all the continents of the earth. Met with doctors, disease and cure. Had summoned surviving siblings to family home in England September. Had preferred Asia to all others. Had preferred living in countries with missing languages. She had not spoken in one word in three years since her third divorce. Had preferred staying in Cantonese dialect, Northern China. Words impossible to separate. Words as others are first divorce. Had stayed in room once, one full month, three years prior, Northern China. Never straying, never speaking, not one word, not a loud voice, no spoke. Ruth had loved her brother Robert. Family shocked by Ruth's absence. Never forgiven, never heard. Richard was first to hear news of plane crash. Second half of ticket Ozark Mountains. Bill Billy's found them. Picked their clothes and cleaned the money. Ruth had mourned Brother Robert's death. Gold. Deeply, endlessly, silently. Who will be youngest, most of these, PhD, modern British daughters. Had never forgiven parents for not reaching her in time. Had never said goodbye to Robert. Mm. One brief marriage to a surgeon. Never reached her. The gentle black and ball barren, ovaries broken at birth. Richard feels responsible. Ruth feels angry. Who will be left husband with her? First to door, first to street, first to forget. Richard feels responsible. Ruth feels angry. Lived with friends, always male. Richard feels responsible. Ruth feels angry. Who will be loved her brother for the deep, more distant? Parents and siblings never forgiven. They never forgave. Richard feels responsible for his parents' death. Ruth feels angry at her parents' death. Who leaves unable to be the death of her parents? Envy, all of the love. Envy, all of the love. Envy, all of the love. Richard glances at Ruby. Richard smiles in Ruby's pain. As does Ruth. Ruby regains her strength. She moves to circle where she flings her black coat after tossing small baton weekly kids to the old side sofa. Richard is contemptuous of her gesture. As is Ruth. Always I was so much amused and surprised to find herself smiling. And she adjusts her skirt. Ruby adjusts her skirt. He tucks blouse into skirt by reaching under skirt, pulling blouse and his down, straightening blouse perfectly into skirt, tucking over her breasts. Richard studies at rests. Certain there's no Brazier supporting him. Ruth studies at rests. Certain there's no Brazier supporting him. Will he adjust to Brazier? Ruth adjusts to Brazier. Richard scratches his chest and coughs. Will he lose to God? The cold glass full of ginger. Thank you. 
glancing at any stain on the rug near his foot. Bruce looks cautiously at her own stain. Ruby got to decant accidentally, causing the decant to crash down loudly in the top bar, causing loud noise to sound sharply in the wind. Richie turns quickly to see what Ruby has done. And there's Ruby. Ruby's amazed by what she's done. She takes the bar towel and fingers she wipes the spill of the liquid. And action. She moves to bar. But she pours glass full of ginger. She finds glass decanter on the table, which she holds.
Watches quietly, disapproving. Ruth is embarrassed. Sorry she negotiated for the touching of Richard's head. She takes two points, but stiffly, backwards, and stops. Ruth's stern is staring at Ruby. Ruth now looks at Ruby, as Ruby looks at Ruby. The sister's eyes need to hold an absolute picture. Ruth neither looks away nor does she smile, nor does Ruby. Stands, crosses the room to lay on the photograph. Ruby does not break her stay on the room. Richard caresses the black fabric veil with the back of his hand. Nor does Ruth break her stay on the room. He removes the black fabric veil and allows it to fall to the floor near his feet. Ruth is still sitting in the cemetery, my sisters. She turns now to watch Richard, as does Ruby. Richard reaches his left hand, up and forward. He touches his first man in the photograph, tracing his finger along his cheek. Through the void between the man and the woman. Finally, allowing the spirit to rest on the chin on the image of the woman in the photograph. Ruby moves to Richard's chair. Six. Allowing the stretch to remain open on the leg. Okay, when you're ready. Richard removes black fabric veil from the photograph. Ruth 
bows her head, silently mouths the words for power. Phoebe stands, bows her head, silently mouths the word. Richard notices a naked thigh. Rose notices Richard noticing Ruby's naked thigh. Richard notices that Ruby's noticing. Ruby tucks skirt down to me. And with left hand, wipes into it from the left cheek. Richard crosses over the bar. Binds bottom of scotch. Richard crosses them to shoes and socks. Let's say. Move to sofa center. To do cares of the time assistance on the Ruby notices the towel on the floor next to the chair in which she's sitting. She nudges and moves, saying in her tone. Senses which is disapproval. Stops nudging stay. The search leans forward and rubs stay with the fingers, allowing the stay to return to life, licking with the tongue. Ruth drags. Which is disgusting. These tiny shoes. Ruth takes three steps backwards. Stirky. Who returns? Looks at the Open the stair at him. She closes her pool now. It's coming to the back of his neck. Find that arm man. When you're ready. Crosses room to photograph, raises the to image of mother and father. Then he allows Bottle to fall to the floor near his feet. He touches the photograph precisely as he did before. Thank 
down her head, sobs covering eyes and palm of right hand. Richard closes his coat fully now. It's in color to the back of his head. He discovers black arm there. She clenches in his fist. He raises him in his direction, just pointing and accusing him. George looks up, then suddenly down, averting eyes from Richard. But then looks up again. Stares directly into Richard's eyes. Richard waits to see if she had the strength across the road to him. Bruce takes a step in Richard's direction, never breaking the joint stare. But then she does. She stops, blowing her eyes. Ruby stands, looks at Richard, unmoving Richard. Richard continues his stare at Ruth. Richard crosses from his jaw, open the same. 